Hello and welcome back to the Google Workspace Update podcast from Strawberry 7. My name is Adam. And my name is Adam. We're here every week to bring you the latest updates happening in the world of Google Workspace. This podcast is available in audio format from wherever you cast your pods and also in video format on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7. Coming up on the show today. We've got just three updates for you today, so it should be quite a quick show, unless Adam and I go off on a tangent, which of course we never ever do. Uh, so we've got three updates for you too. Google Drive, another one to Google Drive, and then finally to Google Meet Hardware. As always, there is a link in the video or podcast description to the document that we read from. This document contains some more detailed information, some moving graphics, some pictures, and even some links showing you these in a bit more detail. So let's get to it. On with the show. So uh, very first update for everybody is to do with Google Drive. So Google is making some updates to the Google Drive metrics in the admin console apps reports and the reports API. As a result of these improvements, admins who analyze metrics will have more reporting clarity and can better understand activity trends within their domain. Specific changes include metric dates will shift from Pacific date daylight time to specific standard time, moving files between team drives and directly sharing items inside share drives will now be included in the sharing metrics. Sharing items with embedded content will now be counted as a single action in the sharing metrics versus being counted twice. And also metrics that calculate the number of owned items added or removed will no longer include activity for changing permissions that do not impact a user's ability to access a file. Okay, I'll be honest, when you started reading this, Adam, I thought, oh, great, some useful sort of metrics that we're going to get in the API and the sort of reporting tool. It seems more that Google are just kind of tidying it up a little bit rather than adding in any kind of juicy extras that we're going to we're going to see in there, wouldn't you say? Yes, that's right. Um, I, I don't have um, r- really strong feelings one way or another with this update. It's, it kind of it is what it is. I was like, okay, that that's nice. That's that, that's cool. I don't feel really passionate or against it in um, uh, either way really i'm a little bit neutral I was like, okay that's cool yeah i mean there's certain things that i'm quite surprised about in a way like when it says they're shifting the dates from pacific daylight time to pacific standard time although i understand that in terms of pacific standard time is going to be more sort of standard, standard. you know <laughs> rather, yeah yeah exactly uh i do understand that but I actually would have thought that Google would have had their system smart enough that it would know what... Your time zone. Yeah, what time zone you're in. Unless, of course, again, I'm under, I'm misunderstanding this, and they're saying that they're doing that for only customers that are affected by Pacific Daylight or Pacific Standard Time. So maybe it's only those customers uh, rather than everybody. I can't fully remember i have used the uh drive report uh sort of section a few times but i can't really remember whether there's those time stamps are related to your own local time i've never really looked anything up that's had a time critical element on it that i can remember so but having said that when you go to the activity part of google drive those times are correct in terms of they're to your region because those are to our region aren't they? So maybe that's only affecting those customers in those time zones. But, you know, the other stuff is sort of just tidying things up and there's not quite as much as I was hoping in there when you first started reading it, but it's still cool, you know? I mean, for anybody who, like we say before, for anybody out there who's doing a lot of interaction with these particular things, it will be, I'm sure, very useful to not have the sharing items counted twice, for example, you know, that they put that in a single action rather than counting it twice, that would be, I imagine, pretty useful. Yes, absolutely. And this is it's another one of those updates. Um, it's definitely for the admins out there. So obviously this is definitely to do with the reporting as well. My initial thought um, when it did say that uh, metrics that calculate the number of own I- owned items added or removed will no longer include activity for changing permissions that do not impact a user's ability to access a file. I wondered if you, it may actually be quite helpful that you did see that, so then you can see if um, 
uh, file permissions have changed as a result of something else. However, I'm thinking there's probably other reports that probably would that information is probably not lost. Um, I don't really, I've not really used the reporting all that much myself, but I'm thinking that information would actually be quite helpful, but that's probably somewhere else that if you wanted mm. to see that. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I, uh, From memory, again, I've never had to do it specifically myself, but from memory, I'm pretty sure that when you go into those reports, you can actually run a specific report around permission changing. So hopefully that data would still be in there, even though it isn't in that particular report, you know, that particular sort of thing of, of moving um, uh, items. So, yeah, I, I think generally this is pretty good. It's like I've said before, I do wish that you could just go in and you could run a report and say, show me all of the files that are owned, uh, that, sorry, that are shared to anybody with the link. I've said that several times before. I was going to say, um, say, say it enough times and eventually it will happen. <laughs> eventually the AI bot will pick it up and it will go to Google Update. It will, I mean, that would be very useful. Having said that, when they changed those search, the search criteria in Google Drive and they added those little sort of criteria where you could say, people that it was shared with and things like that you could get pretty close to that so they have made some roads to, towards that uh it's just not quite easy enough for me yet to, to get that information out but for this adam when's the what's the getting started rollout pace and availability please okay so for the admins out there admins with drive audit enabled SKUs can access the metrics in the google admin console under reporting apps reporting or through the reports API and I've added a link in our document for that. For the end users though uh, there is no end user setting for this feature it is kind of more for the admins really. Um, the rollout pace uh, rapid release and scheduled release there's a gradual rollout for this update so up to 15 days for feature visibility which started on January the 9th and this update is available too. So uh, metrics are available to customers on Drive Audit enabled SKUs with access to the admin console and reports API. So this includes Google Workspace Business Starter, Business Standard, Business Plus, Essentials Starter, Enterprise Essentials, Enterprise Essentials Plus, Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Frontline Starter, Frontline Standard, Education Fundamentals, Education Standard, Education Plus, the Teaching and Learning Upgrade, Nonprofits, Cloud Identity, and Cloud Identity Premium Customers. It okay. may have been shorter to just say it's not available to users with a personal account. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> probably quicker to say that. But yeah, there's quite a few in there. I love the fact that Google just make to, like to make life really difficult by having essential starter, enterprise essentials, essentials plus. You know, there's like so many enterprise <laughs> yeah. essentials in there, isn't there? Um, but yeah, okay, great. Well, that's uh, that's lovely. Thanks, Adam. What have we got next, please? Up next, uh, we've got another update for Google Drive. So you can now easily share Google Drive files to Google Calendar meeting attendees. So since introducing the new sharing dialog for Google Drive, Docs, Sheets, Slides and Forms in 2020, Google has made several enhancements to make sharing effortless across workspace. They're excited to announce the option to share any file with all meeting participants on a Google Calendar invite via the sharing dialog within a file. So as a file owner or editor, you can go to the, the share button of your file, type in the name of the calendar event, select the event, confirm the correct list of meeting attendees that are, have been added, uh, select the user's access level, and then click send. So if you'd like to link the file to the calendar invite, you can select attach to calendar event before clicking send. Google knows sharing files is critical to building a collaborative environment. With this new feature, users can easily share files uh, with meeting attendees before a meeting, ensuring everyone is prepared and able to collaborate on the same file. And we've just got a little bit extra for this. So if you attach a file directly to a calendar invite, you'll see a pop-up asking if you'd like to share the file with the meeting attendees. So I really like that you get that little uh, prompt. So then if you're just adding your file to your um, Google Calendar event, it will pop up and basically say, do you want to actually give those that are in this meeting uh, access to the files that you've attached to that meeting? Because it's, uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you because I, that was actually going to be one of my first questions <clears throat> was sort of what the interface is like on this. And there is the getting started here. So I wasn't going to jump ahead too much. I was going to let you get to that bit. Uh, 
generally really really great update this is really really nice to see for our listeners in the document there's a very nice graphic that shows this in a bit more detail and uh, if you're interested in this update I'd highly encourage you to go and check the graphic out the tick box to be able to attach it to the calendar event is really really nice as well that's a really nice touch so you can do it it sounds like kind of both ways almost you can sort of share it out to the calendar event and attach it and also when you're attaching it it says do you want to share it so that's quite nice to see it both ways around yes absolutely so i quite like so at the moment uh, if you go to share a a, a file from your Google Drive. Go to open up the, the share dialog, and uh, if you have your uh, what's the term? It's the the directory uh, is available across your network. You can just start typing mm-hmm. in someone's name. What typing your colleague's name, and then you'll see their Google account automatically pop up. You can now just type in the name of a calendar event. Say if you happen to have a meeting next week with somebody, just type in the name of that meeting, and then you should see the calendar event. Uh, 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 as an option, which I think is really, really handy. One thing that I'm not 100% sure of, I think it is, reading between the lines a little bit, I think when you select the calendar event, it doesn't share it to the calendar event, if that makes sense. If you select the calendar event when you're sharing, I think you'll see... I think Google will have a look who is attending this meeting, and if it's uh, Bob and Lorraine, then it will share it. It will choose to share your file with Bob and Lorraine. Right. Well, when you attach it to the calendar event? When you're sharing it directly from Google Drive. Oh, I see. Okay. Or, or both, so, actually. Yeah, I think this is what I'm saying. I think it kind of does it both ways round. I tell you what, well, I'll let you get to the getting started in, in just a second. Maybe that will clarify a little bit what the actual process is um, for, for adding this. Because on the graphic, it seems to indicate sort of almost both ways round. Well, um, but I've I'll... kind of mentioned uh, the, the getting started because, uh, so I said, so uh, as a file owner or editor, go to the share button of a file, mm. type in the title of a character ca- calendar event, select mm. the event, then confirm the correct list of meeting attendees are added. So it's that bit. So I think after you've selected your event, it will say, ah, these are the people that have been invi- invited to that event. So those yeah. are the people I'm going to share this file with. Yeah, which is what that graphic is showing, I think, just below it, isn't it? Because at the bottom of that list, it's got what looks like the calendar event there, and presumably, and it says there are two people. So I think if you click on that, it would then say, OK, I'm going to share it out to these two people. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. That's doing it from the file side. And then the graphic underneath is sort of if you're adding it in and then you can attach it to the calendar event or something like that, I think. Or, or is that still sharing it? It's like that's the next dialogue that you get afterwards where it's then confirming the people and saying, do you want to attach it? Is that what is that what the other graphic is? No, I think you're right. First, time, we're, we're, we're keeping this super clear, crystal clear. The, very, the, <laughs> the, the first graphic, I think, is what, what you will see when you're sharing directly from Google Drive. The second mm. graphic is um, in the calendar event. So when you're creating a new uh, calendar event, you've added your file uh, to that calendar event, and then you titch, mm. a, a, then you tick uh, attach to calendar event. Then anybody that you're sending your calendar event to will also have access to that file. Yeah, yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to say because it, it could. the The only reason I say that is because the graphic above it says that the event is with two people, and then in the next graphic there are two people in the sharing dialogue, and then you've got the option of attaching it. So, um, yeah, we're learning together, Adam. So it's <laughs> like you know, we're so sorry, listeners, if we sound a little bit unclear on on this. It's just a little bit hard to tell from what Google have put out here exactly what this interface is going to look like. But I think the important takeaway is the fact that certainly from what they're saying here, you can go into a file and you can select in the sharing dialog. You can now select the calendar event and share it out that way. That is definite because it's here on the uh, on the graphic that they're showing. Uh, And I think you can probably do it the other way around as well, where it's saying if you attach a file directly to a calendar invite, you then see a pop up where it says, do you want to share it? The only sort of thing I was going to say about this was, unfortunately, whilst this is a great update, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to actually use it too much because um, we have a bit of a weird thing, don't we, Adam, where most of our customers in schools, their Google accounts are actually on a different domain to their email 
accounts. So I always have this where I'll set a calendar entry up and it will say, oh, this file that you're sharing doesn't, like these people can't see it. Do you want to grant access? And it, and I have to say no, because the emails are different to the uh, to the Google accounts, if that makes sense. Yes, but would that be an issue for this? Because their the way because their Google account is their Google account. So the way that they're access if they go to their calendar, they'll see the events in their calendar, and if they mm. go to Google Drive, they'll be able to see access the files there because it would just all be shared within the same account. Yeah, but not everybody that they we just won't get an is... email notification about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I often do is when I'm doing a calendar invite to our customers, I do it to their at LGFL mail domain mm -hmm. and, I, and I add them that way as guests but of course their Google accounts are different you know the Google accounts are their school specific domains um, yes. so that's one thing that this update does not mention but I'm, I'm, I think there may I think we may have discussed it um, on a previous episode so for example if you create your calendar event but you don't for example you don't actually invite anybody but maybe you send a link out to your events to whomever and then they and they're allowed to join that way they just go to join your meeting and you um grant them entry would they how would they then get the sharing permission to your files i think we have discussed that on a previous episode i can't remember maybe did at the end of the meeting or something did it is there like a dialogue box that says do you want to share the files with the with everybody that was in the meeting or maybe that was within the chats within the meeting <laughs> was where it gets confusing isn't it yeah like yes. chat within meet and things like that but i think you're right i think there is some kind of you know something that pops up to basically say oh do you want to share this out or it does it automatically because that that's another clever thing with um that google introduced with google calendar was when they introduced that meeting notes sort of feature and you could just click that one button to add meeting notes and it sort of automatically shared it out to everybody correctly and everything like that so that that was quite good as well so um but yeah, despite the way that update. we've explained it it's a great update i'm sure it's super yeah. simple <laughs> so i think we've yeah, yeah. made it sound a it, bit more confusing than it actually is <laughs> <laughs> I th yeah i mean think fundamentally it is a really simple update because it's just improving the sharing features uh it, it's just a bit unclear from the information that's given on google here exactly what those dialogues look like it just would have been a bit nicer if they put a moving graphic in here you know i always like those moving <laughs> graphics they make it much better for people with simple minds like me so uh yeah what's the getting started on here then adam okay so for the admins out there there is no admin control for this feature but for the end users uh, i could follow the steps that i mentioned before which is uh from google drive you can click the share button of a file type in the title of a calendar event select the event confirm the correct list of meeting attendees have been added select the user's access level so if you want them to just view the file or or be able to edit it and then click on send uh, if you're creating a calendar a event uh, when you attach your file to the event tick the little box that says attach to calendar event before clicking send to share a file to a calendar event you must be the file owner or editor and be a participant on the meeting that you're sharing to the calendar uh, visit google's help center if you'd like to learn more about sharing files from google drive and i've added a lovely link in our document for that okay that's good to know because that might be quite relevant for um, people like assistants who are creating calendar events on somebody else's behalf and things like that. So they'll probably be doing it in their calendar, but just in case there's some kind of odd sharing going on or something like that, it's, it's good to know that you've got to be the file owner or editor and you've got to be a participant on the meeting as well if you're doing that. Uh, thanks, Adam. What's the rollout pace and availability, please? Okay, so a rapid release and scheduled release. There is a gradual rollout for this update, which started on January the 11th, and this is available to all Google Workspace customers, as well as those with a personal Google account. Oh, okay, cool. Available to everybody. Lovely. And what have we got next, please? 
And finally, from us this week, we've got an update for Google Meet hardware. I wanted to emphasize it's hardware. It's not software. It's the, it's a hardware update, just so we're, we're in the clear from, from the get-go. Um, so uh, Google Meet is now available on Logitech Android appliances. So Google is now supported on Logitech's Rallybar and Rallybar Mini Android-based appliances for collaboration rooms and spaces of just about any size. After initial setup, admins can easily enroll, manage, and monitor these devices using the Google Admin Console. Google Meet on Logitech Android-based devices is supported on Calab OS version 1.11 as a video conferencing provider. Logitech Android devices that now support Google Meet are the Logitech Rallybar, Logitech Rallybar Mini, and Tap IP. As part of this launch, Google is also providing admins with a new capability to protect their room devices using a passcode. This ensures that only authorized users are able to access and change the room's device settings. This feature is only available for Logitech Rallybar and Rallybar Mini in uh, in appliance mode, where Rallybar's built-in computer supports Google Meet without the need for an additional computer or a user's laptop. And you can also visit Google's Help Center if you'd like to learn more about setting up Logitech devices as Meet hardware and enrolling your devices. And, and I have added a few links within our document for that. Great, thank you, Adam. Well, uh, as we said before, we don't really use these Google Meet hardware devices, uh, but there's a picture of what they look like here, and they look very nice. They're uh, they're nice looking devices um, for sure, and it's good to see that Google are expanding this support for these Google Meet hardware devices a little bit here and going into Logitech. Uh, Logitech, uh, pun the pun, is the most logical sort of route because Apple do the same, don't they? I mean, we've often seen before in the world of Apple that some of the first devices that are supported in terms of accessories outside of Apple are either Logitech, or it used to be Belkin as well, but I think it's more Logitech these days. Uh, so, mm -hmm. good to see. Uh, very nice, like I say, very nice looking devices. I particularly like the thing that they've done about the passcode there. That's really good to add a bit of security. Yes, absolutely. Uh, my my um, uh, the, the main thought that I had about this update, because it's not brand, as far as I'm aware, unless I'm missing something, I don't think this is brand new hardware. It's existing mm -hmm. hardware that now supports Google Meet. So I only really wondered, well, what was it uh, available to before? So I'm assuming it was probably um, used for things like uh, Microsoft Teams or for Zoom meetings, um, but basically meetings using um, a, another provider. But it looks like it is now available to use with Google Meet, which is Great. Yeah, I mean, it could have even been, you know, Logitech's own kind of thing. Um, they do do that sometimes. They do sort of make some software that tries to to sort of do that type of thing. So maybe they made their own, but you're right. So popular we haven't heard of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if we haven't heard of it, oh, for God, it's nobody. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, great that it's supporting Google Meet um, sort of in within that hardware. I think it's very, very good step forward for them. So that's, uh, you know, all, all the more power to them. Uh, what's the getting started here, please, Adam? Okay, so for the admins out there, Logitech Rallybar and Rallybar Mini appliances will need to be updated to Calab OS 1.11 in order to select Google Meet as the conferencing partner application. Once the device is updated to uh, Collab OS 1.11 and the conferencing partner partner is set to Google Meet, follow the on device prompts to enroll the device into the Google Meet hardware admin console. You can visit Google's help center to learn more about setting up Logitech devices as Meet hardware. There's a link in the document for that. Google Meet on Logitech Android appliances require Google Meet hardware licenses, and please reach out to a Google Meet hardware reseller for that. Uh, for the end users, though, no action is required once a Logitech rally bar and Rallybar Mini have been successfully enrolled, you can join Google Meet meetings normally. Oh, fantastic. And just to remind everybody, we are Google Meet resellers. So please do contact us if you need any uh, licenses for that. Uh, you can contact us on info at strawberry7.com. Just to give us a plug, uh, ourselves a plug there, because it is our podcast after all. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the rollout face and availability? I do what I want. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> what's the rollout face and availability, please, Adam? Okay, uh, this update is available as part of Logitech 
Logitech's Calab OS 1.11 release. Uh, for more information, please reach out to your Logitech account team or reseller. Are we a Logitech account team or reseller? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we are for Logitech, but we can certainly put you in touch with somebody who is. So, yeah. Come to us for all your Google needs, though. <laughs> um, uh, this update is available on Logitech Rallybar and Rallybar Mini customers. Uh, support for additional Logitech devices will be added over time. So stay tuned for that mm -hmm. one. And this is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers. That's pretty cool that they're adding in some more Logitech devices, so they must be pretty committed to, to sort of making it work with them. That's uh, that's pretty cool to know. Um, yeah, I mean, for anybody who's using those Logitech devices, I'm sure it'd be really, really nice to hear. Uh, thank you very much, Adam. And that's it, everybody. That's everything that you need to hear about all of the latest updates happening in the world of Google Workspace. Remember that there is a video version of this podcast available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7, and an audio version available from wherever you cast your pods. Thank you very much for joining us this week. And we'll be back again next week with more updates. Goodbye. Bye.